Sarah Lee, she's across the court. Yeah. Yes. Oh, jamming your face off. Oh, well, you want some? You want some water? Um, yeah, I think I will. Have yeah, a take a little sip. Boy, I love that record. It's a wonder, it's a wonderful lyric, and, and it's the kind of record when you're at a party, everybody starts looking for a hand when it comes on. You know, hey, come on, lady. Oh boy, good to see you. It crossed over. No, it's the number one single, and it's crossed over on the charts. Yeah, uh, the song is doing quite well. Uh, we're very pleased with it. Uh, it's now beginning to cross over. Thank God. Yeah. You know, when CBS decides to push that button, it goes all the way to the top. That's so good. let's just hope that this album here, say. Goes all the way to the top. Yes, indeed. Here's the album. Alexander O'Neill, here's the. Boy, now the lyric is cute. The lyric, for those of you who uh, who aren't into lyrics, and you just be talking about, I just like the way it sounds. You know, uh, <laughs> the lyric says, "You're a fake, baby." Yes. <laughs> no, no way to explain it, all that stuff. Well, where did that lyric come from? Actually, um, the whole concept of the whole album actually was done by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Yes. To my buddies. Thank you, guys. I love you. Yeah. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Terry. They're, the, they're like the Burt Bacharach and Hal Davis of the ghetto. They hey. are bad. <laughs> I'm serious. They're bad. Anything they touch turns to gold. They're, they're very talented guys. But actually, um, the song uh, Fake was uh, always uh, intended to be just a fun song. I think that possibly I could safely say that fake uh, it has an undeniable dance groove. Mm -hmm. And also, the, the lyrical contents of the song just happen to be very for real and very true. So we in the Flight Time family back in Minneapolis, we somewhat sum it up as, if the shoe fits. Where? Where? <laughs> at, a, uh, at a certain point in your career, now you're from Minneapolis, which is like, it's like our, my generation, it's like our Motown, you know? Because everybody's coming out of there. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Morris Day, yourself, Prince, which is uh, who kind of started that whole thing or brought it to our attention, yes. and I hear you did stuff with him that was never released. Yes, that's true. Well, what was the reason? Well, actually, um, Prince and I, you know, uh, at the time, Prince was in a very formative stage of his career, which I can understand. When you're in a situation like that, how you have to be in control of everything and everybody around you. And me, at the time, I happened to be a very, very confident type person. So I always felt that you know, I would find my destiny and find my calling. So it happened that the material, I started recording with Prince, which was a project that I was brought into by Morris Day. Mm -hmm. By Morris and I being very good friends, he decided to give me a break, so to speak, you know? Yeah. But uh, consequently, through differences and uh, some of financial uh, differences, and also in uh, aspect uh, to my future and, and, you know, what the future was gonna hold for Alexander O'Neill. So I decided that it would be best for me to go on and pursue a solo career, and I'm very thankful, and that's why I'm here today. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, because I love your work, and you're going to stick around, because you're going to do a little something later on in the show. But coming up next from La Bamba, Miss Rosanna DeSoto, right after this important message.